The timeline for certain life events has changed a lot over the years and research shows that there's a growing number of women that are having their first baby in their late 30s and even 40s. And I am definitely an example of this. Dr. Natalie Gentili is here to share more on why women are choosing to become mothers later in life. I remember being young and a lot of my um, friends mothers they were having kids in their in their 20s and my mom had me when she was in her 30s and I remember thinking that that was older but now I feel as though the 40s are the new 30s I agree yeah I felt the same way about my mom yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> because she was in mm -hmm. her 30s as well right but I see it more and more with my patients they're freezing their eggs they're choosing to hold off on starting a family till a little bit later and it's becoming more and more accepted so let's talk about the whys because I think there are a number of different factors that go into this but all of it seems to come back to being ready in some way or another. Yeah, I think women are starting to realize that they have the option to feel ready to have children and they have that autonomy to make that choice. Whether it's how your job is going, you know, financial concerns, wanting to buy a house first, mm -hmm. really wanting to find a partner that you can raise that child with. You know, these things are all taking a little bit longer. Also, women are going to more longer education, right? Yeah. And yeah. so college, then there's graduate school, these things are going to delay that as well. So you have that option now medically to make that a possibility, which is neat. Yeah, I mean, I think some women are definitely choosing to wait, but there are a lot of women where, like you mentioned, maybe they want to be in a relationship, maybe they want to want to be married, and so you can't help but to wait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what are some things uh, for people to do to put into place healthy practices if you're deciding or you need to have children later on in life? Sure. So there are a couple of things you can consider from mm -hmm. a medical perspective, like freezing your eggs, looking into IVF or in vitro mm -hmm. fertilization as options in the future, just so you feel prepared mm -hmm. and educated about what your options may be if you have trouble getting, let's call it naturally pregnant, you know, like as people would expect without IVF. So I think from a medical perspective, thinking about those as options and being educated. Also, gearing up your body. So how you're eating, you know it, I'm, I'm saying it again, how you're eating, how you're moving, how you're sleeping, your social support is a huge one here, mm -hmm. right? Who is around you to help you? It takes a village, as we know. Well, this is such yeah. a good thing to bring up too, because we know that perimenopause can start even in your late 30s or early 40s. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting pregnant in that window of time, also, it's the recovery afterwards. What does that look like for you if you are a little bit older and do your hormones bounce back the way that they should or is it that going to be something to look at too? Sure. So start with the getting pregnant part. If you're entering those perimenopausal years, which can be 10 years before you even go through menopause, right, right. I say it a lot on here, track your cycles. You know, know what your cycles are, know your body and have that bodily intuition because those things can start to shift and make it potentially more challenging to get pregnant right. as you know, that time right. goes on. Postpartum may be no different for you depending on you know how old you are when you have that baby, but understanding that there may be some major hormonal shifts postpartum plus the perimenopausal changes that are happening that you need to be aware of and prepared for. That comes down to, again, how you're fueling your body, making sure you have enough recovery time. You know, in a country where we don't really have that option right, to yeah. take a lot of time from work, like maybe preparing for that with your job ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. and I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I feel like a lot of women, they lose hope mm -hmm. because we live in a world that tells you if you don't have a baby by a certain age, then it's just, it's not gonna happen. But I do feel like there are a lot of um, advances in medical technologies now. A lot has changed where women are having very successful successful pregnancies later in life. I mean, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I didn't, I didn't have one issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I was pregnant in my forties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is quite remarkable. The options that are out there. And I think the more that you can have a close relationship with your doc, mm -hmm. feel like you've got, you know, you're armed yeah. well with the knowledge, the better. And while we have you here, I really want to ask you because there was, there's something new that came out about, uh, and we're speaking women's health, a pap smear alternative. What does this look like for women? Is this something that all doctors are going to start practicing or what is it? I haven't seen it in my practice clinically rolled out, but I think it's coming down the pipeline pretty soon about self-testing or self-administered you know, at uh, administered pap smears. And again, I think a lot of this comes back to autonomy and women feeling comfortable with their bodies and kind of taking those matters into their own hands. Okay. Again, this has to be discussed with your doctor if it's the 
right option for you. Absolutely. Yes. And we want to just, because we're talking about being a little bit later in life and going through all of these changes too, you are doing something coming up in just a couple of weeks on postmenopausal years and, and going through all that. Yeah, so our women that are in their menopausal years and postmenopausal, we have a workshop on September 26th at my studio, Rebel Wellness, 6 to 8 p.m., panelist of a urogynecologist, sports med doc, and a dietitian to talk Wonderful. about all yes. these things. It's so oh, fantastic. That's so good. Thank you. So yeah. great that you're supporting so many people. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. If you're interested in learning more about direct care physicians of Pittsburgh or Rebel Wellness, we will have more information on our website, kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh.